Hi everyone, I'm Dan Clayton from Noisebusters. Uh, I wanted to go over what a noise impact assessment was. Noise impact assessments, or NIAs, are becoming increasingly prevalent as part of the development process. The terms noise and impact assessment aren't anything new, but the requirement to complete one is increasing. Undertaking a noise impact assessment doesn't have to be a requirement to be beneficial. In fact, being aware of the potential noise impact of a project at the early stages of design can save money and time. Imposed mitigation, shutdowns or retrospective assessment can cause all sorts of headaches and issues, and a proactive noise impact assessment can help reduce these challenging events as a developer or environmental manager. A noise impact assessment can be defined by the two elements in the phrase, noise and impact assessment. So what is noise? Noise is unwanted sound. Most people will use noise and sound interchangeably thinking that they are the same thing. The difference is that sound is the physical phenomenon of an acoustic wave moving through a medium. The medium we typically consider is air, but it can be any solid, liquid or gas. Sound is also defined as the perception of these waves, be it human or by an animal. Remember that age-old age old question, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? The answer is yes and no then. The term noise adds a subjective interpretation of sound to make it unwanted. Think of it like this. Sound is objective and noise is subjective. The mix-up occurs due to the assumption that all sound is unwanted. But this isn't the case. Imagine the following scene. You're the kind of person who loves to spend time at the beach and can't wait to hear the ocean. You're relaxing on a beach listening to the waves lap on the sand, a scene of paradise. You likely wouldn't think this is a place with unwanted sound or noise. Now consider the same scene, but you're trying to listen out for the sound of a rare budgie with a faintly audible song. The problem is that you can't hear anything except the waves lapping on the beach. You would now class this same sound from the ocean as unwanted sound or noise. The only thing that has changed is the context and interpretation of the person in the situation. The sound of the waves hasn't changed. Therefore, referring to all sound as noise is not always true. Let's consider another situation that I came across from a noise impact assessment perspective. An industrial site was being constructed in a rural area. The main haul route for the construction trucks was next to a small group of houses. And as part of the conditions of the permit, the sound level from the trucks passing needed to be measured and compared against criteria. The trucks pass the houses regularly throughout the day, and sound due to construction is typically classed as noise, as it is presumed the noise will have a negative response from the homeowners and be unwanted. However, on speaking to the residents of the houses when measuring the sound from trucks, it was evident that the residents actually enjoyed the trucks going past most of the residents were retired and stated that it was nice to have some activity to watch. The sound from the trucks provided them with an excitement that something was happening in the village. So assuming all sound is unwanted in a noise impact assessment is not always applicable. To counter this, there are people who consider the trucks as unwanted. So we also can't assume the sound is wanted. It's important to be careful with the subjective assumptions of the assessment of sound. So what's the issue with noise? Noise is a pollutant and can lead to significant adverse health effects. In fact, the World Health Organization, or WHO, concluded that noise is the second largest environmental cause of health problems. This is second only to the impact from air quality particulate matter. Long-term noise exposure above 55 decibels with any weighting can lead to all sorts of nasty things such as long-term health effects on mental and cardiovascular health, including elevated blood pressure and heart attacks. So what's an impact assessment? An impact assessment is the evaluation of changes due to the introduction or removal of something, in this case sound or noise. The extent of the impact is assessed, typically before the change happens. Impact can be positive or negative depending on the perspective and context. So what is a noise impact assessment? A noise impact assessment, or NIA, is the combination of both of these elements, essentially looking at the changes due to the introduction of an activity that produces sound, with the assumption that the sound generally is unwanted, like trucks driving by or 
a new receptor is introduced to a location near to an existing sound source, like a housing development next to a highway. The type of noise impact assessment varies depending on the jurisdiction. There is a variance on the approach to a noise impact assessment within counties, municipalities, provinces, states, countries, and for the type of sound source. The difference in approach has been influenced by many things over the years. These are typically differences in political pressure, public complaint frequency, response from authorities, culture, types and scales of activities, and the proximity of people to activities that generate sound. So what are the considerations of a noise impact assessment? Even with the difference in the approach between jurisdictions, there are common themes and considerations when carrying out a noise impact assessment. These include, number one, what sound sources are being introduced? Two, where and who are receiving the sounds produced by the sources under evaluation, and are they human or not? Three, are new noise sensitive receptors being introduced near an existing sound source? Four, when will the sound sources operate? Is it a noise sensitive period like the night time when people are trying to sleep? Or will it only operate at less sensitive times like the middle of the day? Five, what time of year will the sound sources operate? Seasonal or year round? Six, how long will the sound sources operate for? Are they permanent or temporary? Seven, this is an important one. Does the sound source have any acoustic features or characteristics such as tonality like a honk, a tone, or a ring? Impulsivity, banging sounds like a drum kit, intermittency, the sound comes and goes, or any other fluctuations or a mix of all the above. The more features a sound has, the more likely someone will be impacted by it, depending on the context. 8. What is the existing acoustic environment like at the noise sensitive receptor location? Is the receptor in a high sound level location, such as next to a busy road or highway, or is it a remote location where very low activity and sound level exists? The existing acoustic environment is often represented by the background sound level and can vary over the course of a day or seasonally. Number nine, how will the sound travel from the source to the receptor? Number 10, what is the absolute sound level from the sound source? Number 11, what is the difference between the sound level from the sound source under assessment and that from the background sources such as nature sounds, existing roads, rail, airports and industry? The higher the level of the sound source under assessment compared to the background acoustic environment, the more prominent it is and potentially the higher the impact. Number 12, to assess the impact of sound, assessment criteria needs to be set. The assessment criteria vary with jurisdiction and the attributes of the background acoustic environment. The criteria should really typically consider the absolute level of sound and a comparison against the current or even future baseline sound levels and characteristics of the background acoustic environment. Number 13, if adverse impacts have been identified, can control measures be provided to reduce the impact of the sound sources on the receptors? So what are the typical stages of a noise impact assessment? 1. Identify characteristics, sound power level and characteristics such as tonality and the location of sound sources to be assessed. Number 2. Identify the location and nature of receptors of the sound sources. Number 3. Evaluate the sound levels of the acoustic environment that's there already, often referred to as a baseline or a background sound level. This can be done through regulations guidance as a desktop assessment, uh, you know, distance from highways, roads, etc. Or you can model uh, the existing sound sources. You could review public sound level contour data such as noise maps and sound level measurements that have been done previously. Number four, you can then evaluate sound levels from the sound sources through calculation to the receptors with an appropriate methodology. The international standard methodology for this is the ISO 9613 acoustics, attenuation of sound during propagation outdoors, but there are alternative approaches used in some jurisdictions, so look out for that. Number five, you would really then derive the appropriate sound level criteria based on the characteristics of the noise sensitive receptor under assessment. Number six, then could compare the sound level at the receptors due to the sources against the criteria to find out what the impact might be. And seven, if required, you would assess the feasibility and effectiveness of sound control measures or mitigation 
It is important to consider potential mitigation options at the early stages of project or design, as this is where sound control measures and mitigation through orientation of sight and selection of equipment can save time and money down the line. It's best to look at this sooner rather than later. Number eight, we assess the impact of the changes to sound, that's level and characteristics, with consideration of any sound control measures or mitigation. And number nine, sometimes other factors come into the assessment process, such as the number of people impacted by the changes in sound level. This mini-series has been a general guide on what a noise impact assessment is, the general considerations and a typical approach. There are variances in the specific approach of noise impact assessments, or NIAs, depending on the context of the source or receptor and the jurisdiction it's in. I've been Dan Clayton from Noisebusters, and I hope you can tune in and uh, listen to more of these videos. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video, and let me know if there's any other topics you'd like to be covered. <laughs>